Today we're working in chapter five, lesson four, page 379, terminating and repeating decimals. And the learning targets today are that we will be able to express a fraction as a decimal. So that'll be both terminating and repeating decimals. And then we will be able to express negative fractions as decimals as well. So those are our learning targets for today. Any number that can be written as a fraction is called a rational number. Every rational number can be written as either a terminating decimal or a repeating decimal. <clears throat> um, we're not looking at um, non-terminating, non-repeating decimals in sixth grade. So um, one thing worth noting, if you look at the word rational, you can see the word ratio right inside of it. Okay, R-A-T-I-O. And then when you look at the word fraction, you have the word ratio in there as well with a little, with a C thrown in, but you can see the root word is the same, R-A-T-I-O. And then there's obviously a C right there. Um, so a, ra a fraction, a rational number, these are ways of expressing ratios of numbers. So just wanted to make that connection for you. So when we have a, um, a terminating decimal, it, um, it, it is a decimal that when we divide it out um, or when we write it, it terminates or it ends, okay? So the decimal form of a rational number which has a repeating digit of zero. So in other words, it would have a, a, um, a zero here, okay? So, or it terminates, it finishes. A repeating decimal is a decimal um, the decimal form of a rational number that repeats, such as one third, which would be 0 0.3 repeating. The real world leak. Judas buying fruit snacks for party favors. He asked the cashier for half a pound of fruit snacks. So half a pound written as a fraction is simply one over two. So one half. And write the decimal that rep represents half a pound. Um, so as a decimal, one half, okay, it's equivalent to, if you think of our decimal base 10, so what would that be as a, with a denominator of 10? It would be five tenths. So five tenths when we write it as a decimal. And then number three, suppose you'd want to buy one third of a pound. So one third of a pound, what would the um, scale show as a decimal? So that would be 0 0.3 repeating because when we do one divided by three, which is what the fraction one third means, one divided by three, okay, three is too big to go into one. So above the one, we write a zero. We add a decimal and bring it straight up and x is zero. Three goes into 10, three times. Three times three is nine. We subtract and we get one, which causes us to annex another zero. This will go in three times and you can see that that will repeat, okay? So it's 0 0.3 repeating written as a decimal <clears throat> and the scale which shows 0 0.333 um, until it runs out of places. Scales and calculators will sometimes truncate or shorten um, repeating decimals or long decimals. Okay, let's head over to page 380. We have a really nice diagram um, mapping out what rational numbers are at the top of page 380. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as fractions. Algebraically, we can define that as A over B, where A and B are integers, and B is not zero because we cannot divide by zero. We can't take items and put them into zero groups. Okay, so here we have some um, examples and non-examples of rational numbers. So um, actually, these are all examples of rational numbers, excuse me. So rational numbers, we have whole numbers um, in the inner circle. So whole numbers um, are zero plus all of the counting numbers. And these are numbers that are just whole numbers. We've been using them since we were, you know, started using numbers. Integers are all of the whole numbers plus their opposites. So negative 10, negative nine, negative eight, negative seven, those negative integers and then positive integers plus zero is an integer. And I wanna just add that into both groups as well. Actually it would go here um, because the whole numbers are included in the integers. 
And then um, rational numbers are numbers that can be written as fractions. So even though this is a decimal, it's 8 tenths, I could write it as a fraction, 8 over 10 or 4 over 5. Um, so we're going to take a look at ways that we can represent rational numbers. In the next table, we have a um, table with rational numbers, repeating decimals, and terminating decimals. So fractions, terminating and repeating decimals, percents, and integers are all rational numbers. Every rational number can be expressed as a decimal by dividing the numerator and the denominator. To indicate the number pattern repeats indefinitely, we use bar notation. Bar notation is placed over the digit or digits that repeat. So in this example, we have 0 0.545454. To write that in bar notation, we would write 0 0.54. We would write 0 0.54 with the bar over both the five and the four. When we have 0 0.583333 and only the three repeats, Using bar notation, we would write this as 0 0.583, and the bar would be only over the three. Okay, and then just um, looking back to this table, um, we have some examples of rational numbers um, and how they can be written uh, with a repeating decimal or a terminating decimal. Um, so three tenths, you could write that with a repeating decimal of zero. So 0 0.3000. As a terminating decimal, you can write that as 0 0.3 or 3 tenths. Okay, 4 fifths, which remember 4 fifths, if we write that as a um, base 10 fraction with a denominator of 10, excuse me, that would be 8 tenths. As a repeating decimal, we can write that as 0 0.800 with a 0 repeating. As a terminating decimal, we can write that as 8 tenths or 0 0.8. Okay, five six. If we divide this out, five divided by six, we get 0 0.83 and the three repeats. It does not terminate. So we can't write it as a terminating decimal because the three repeats. Okay, example one, we are asked to write five twelfths as a decimal. And so this problem is worked out for us. So we have five twelfths, which remember this means five divided by 12. So here's our number five and then divide by 12. So working through that long division, we get 0 0.416 and we see that that six will repeat because we keep seeing that eight being brought down each time or being left over each time we subtract. So as a terminating decimal, or excuse me, as a repeating decimal, we would write this as 0 0.416 and we would use the bar notation to have the bar over the six, okay? Number two, or excuse me, letter A at the top of page 381. Write each fraction as a decimal and use bar notation if necessary. So um, we have one sixth. So we'll go ahead and divide this out. This means, um, I think we'll have enough room here. One divided by six. So six is too big to go into one. So above the one, we write a zero. We put a decimal, bring it straight up, and annex a zero. Six can go into 10 one time. One times six is six, and we subtract 10 minus six is four, bring down this zero, annex another zero, and bring it down. Okay, um, six can go into 40 six times. Six times six is 36. We subtract, we get a four. So we should realize at this point that that will be repeating with the six because we have a four here. If we, if we annex another zero, you'll see that same pattern. This will go in six times. Six times six is 36, which subtract and we get another four. So this would be 0 0.16 with the bar over the six. So 0 0.16 with the six repeating. Eight ninths, if we want to write that um, as a decimal, we would, this means eight divided by nine. So eight divided by nine. Um, nine is too big to go into eight, so above the eight, we write a zero. Put a decimal, annex a zero, bring it straight up. Okay, nine can go into uh, 80, it can go in eight times. Okay, nine times eight is 72. We subtract and we get an eight, and we can see that's going to repeat as well. But let's just do one more step to show it. We annex a zero and bring it down. Nine can go into 80 eight times, 
8 times 9 is 72, subtract. So we see that that's going to repeat. In bar notation, this is 0 0.8 repeating. Letter C, we have 2 elevenths, which means 2 divided by 11. 11 is too big to go into 2, so we put a 0 above the 2, add a decimal, bring it straight up, and then annex a 0. 11 can go into 20 once, so 1 times 11 is 11. We subtract, and we get uh, 20 minus 11 is 9. Bring down a 0 here. Um, 11, sorry, bring it down. 11 can go into 90 eight times. 8 times 11 is 88. And we subtract and we get a two, which we see we have right here with nothing after it. So we know that that's going to repeat. Um, let's just show that though so you can see. Um, but as soon as you see that two and this two had nothing after it, you know it'll be repeating. Um, so bring down a zero. 11 can go into 20 once. One times 11 is 11. We subtract, we get that nine, which we saw that nine here. 11 can, and then bring down a zero. 11 can go into 90. 8 times, 8 times 11 is 88. And so we can see that that's just going to continue to repeat. So in um, decimal form, this would be 0 0.18 bar with the bar over both the 1 and the 8 because both of those repeat. Okay, the second um, skill that we're looking at is um, writing a negative fraction as a decimal. When writing negative fractions as decimals, the process is exactly the same. So divide with positive fractions and then add the negative sign um, back in at the end. Okay, so number two, we're asked to write two ninths as a decimal. This has all worked out for us. So write negative two ninths, excuse me, as a decimal. So again, we're just going to take that negative, just ignore it for our working purposes, and then we'll add it back in at the very end. Okay. So this one is all done for us. We process, uh, we use the same process as writing two ninths as a decimal, two divided by nine. And we work through that. We see it's going to be 0 0.2 repeating. And then we just simply add that negative sign in at the end. So 0 0.2 bar. Okay, number three, we're asked to write negative two and two thirds as a decimal. Write negative two and two thirds as a decimal. So here's one strategy, your textbook changes it into a mixed, uh, an improper fraction and then divides it out that way. Um, negative two and um, two thirds, negative 2.6 bar. So I'm gonna show, that's a great strategy. And then I'm gonna show you just um, instead of adding that um, as an improper fraction, another strategy that you could use is just to say, well, negative two and two thirds equals negative two point, because we know we're being asked to write that as a decimal. So negative two points. And then we can just, we know that the whole number is not going to change. So then we can just divide out the two thirds. So two divided by three, just gives us slightly smaller numbers to work with. Instead of eight divided by three, we just have two divided by three. So three is too big to go to the two. So above the two, we write a zero, put a decimal, bring it straight up. And X is zero. Um, three can go into 20, six times, six times three is 18. We subtract and we get a two. We can see that that's going to repeat, okay? So we have, uh, the six is going to repeat. So we know that as a um, decimal, this would be negative 2.6 repeating. So the six repeats. Letter A, right, or excuse me, letter D. B through F, write each fraction as a decimal, use bar notation if necessary. So for letter D, um, so if I wanna write that as a decimal, I know it's going to be negative zero point because I know that um, number is between zero and negative one. So I can put the zero to the left of my decimal and I can divide this out. This means one divided by four, one divided by four. Okay, so four is too big to go into one. So above the one, I write a zero, add a decimal and bring it straight up. And X is zero, four goes into 10 twice. Two times four is eight. And I subtract and I get two, and X another zero and bring it down. Four goes into 25 times. 
five times four is 20. So I get um, 0 0.25. And again, I wrote my negative first intentionally because it's very easy to just put 0 0.25 and box that as your answer. So I would encourage you to write that negative um, as part of your answer and then do your division and add in the numerical part of your answer. Okay, and we'll do that here as well. Negative five, six. And we wanna write that as a decimal using bar notation if necessary. So I'm just going to go ahead and write equals negative zero point. Okay, and I'll even go as far as to box it in. So now I need to do my division, five, six. So that means five divided by six. So six is too big to go into five. So above the five, I write a zero, put a decimal after the five because it's just five and bring that decimal straight up so that I can annex a zero. And then um, six times eight will give me 48. I subtract it, I get two, annex another zero to bring down. Six can do, go into 20, three times, three times six is 18 subtract and we get a two, we can see that that three is going to repeat, just the three, okay? So this is um, just the three is repeating. So in um, decimal form, this will be negative 0 0.83 with the bar over the three only, with the bar over the three. Letter F, negative two and one sixth. So I'm going to go ahead and write negative two points. Okay, and then I'll divide one by six. So one, six. Six is too big to go into one. So above the one, I write a zero, add a decimal after it, bring it straight up and annex a zero. Six can go into 10 one time. One times six is six. 10 minus six is four. Annex another zero to bring it down. Six can go into 40 six times. Six times six is 36. And I can see that that six is going to repeat. Okay, so in decimal notation or in decimal form, there'll be negative 2.16 with the bar just over the six. Okay, turn the page to 382. Example four. Frankie made 34 out of 34 free throws this season. To the nearest thousands, what is his free throw average? And in this example, they have you using a calculator. So you would do 33 divided by, or excuse me, 34 divided by 44. So 34 divided by 44. And we get 0 0.7727, repeating. Please note that this three at the end, this is repeating. Uh, it just, this calculator just truncates um, which means it just stops in rounds. Um, it doesn't actually show the repeating. It doesn't go on infinitely, but it truly is repeating. So um, we would write this as to the nearest um, thousand. Okay, so here's our tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So we look at the number after that too, and it's a seven, which is five or higher. So we round that up to 0 0.773. Okay, letter G. And we won't use the calculator because in our um, assessment, we're not allowed to use the calculator. So we'll just do this one, which is a very similar problem. We'll do this without the calculator. Of nine students surveyed, four said they prefer exercising in the morning rather than in the evening. So express this fraction as a decimal and use bar notation if necessary. So we have four out of nine. So this is four ninths, and we wanna write that as a decimal. So four divided by nine. Uh, four, I'll work on the side over here, four divided by nine. So nine is too big to go into four. So above the four, I rate a zero, put a decimal because it's just four, not 40, and then annex is zero. Nine can go into 40 four times, subtract, and we get four, and we see that that's going to be repeating. So this is 0 0.4 with the bar over the four. So this was chapter five, lesson four, terminating and repeating decimals.